Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorial. In my last video I have shown you how to add a custom device with a device tree overlay and how to implement a driver for it by using a Linux kernel module. But our last custom device didn't contain any hardware. Today let's change that. Today let's add a GPIO pin to our device. So therefore I have connected an LED to GPIO 21 of a Raspberry Pi and I want to add this GPIO to my device. Okay, and here you can see I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH. And now let me change into my Linux driver tutorials folder. This 20DT probe contains the source code of our last video. And let me copy this DT probe and create a new folder I will call DTGPIO. And let's add, go into this folder and let's look which files are there. So here we have three files. This is the source code for our device tree overlay. This is the source code of our Linux kernel module. And here we have a make file to build both the kernel module and the device tree overlay. And the first thing I will do is I will, I will rename dtprobe to dtgpio.c and I have to change this in the make file as well. So up here I have to change dtprobe to dtgpio. And what you also can see here is I've changed the make for a little bit. So I create a new target for building the device tree overlay. And here I have the command for building the device tree overlay. So now if I just call make, I will build my kernel module and the device tree. This is just to make it a little bit more convenient for me. Okay, cool. So the first thing we do is we have to add our GPIO to our device tree overlay. For this I will open up the test overlay.tts. Here we have my device and its properties. And here let's add our new GPIO. I will call this green LED GPIO. And it's important if you specify a GPIO, it's good if you always end with minus GPIO. And I will set this to first, I have to specify the GPIO controller on which my GPIO is connected. On the Raspberry Pi, on, I only have one GPIO controller, so I can just type here at GPIO. But if you're using another ASIC, maybe you have to specify the number of the GPIO IP and you would have something like GPIO 1 or 0 here. But in my case, and GPIO is okay. The next parameter here is the um, number of the GPIO, which is 21. And as a last argument, I can specify the GPIO polarity. If I want to use an, an active low GPIO, I would to have to write a 1 here. But I want to use an active high GPIO, so I will write a 0 here. Okay, and that's it. So now let me close this and let's try to compile this overlay. Okay, compiling worked fine. So in the next step, we can now implement our driver. So let me uh, open up dtgpio.c. And what I want to do is I want to initialize the um, GPIO here in my dtprobe function. And I want to add a procfs file to write the value of the GPIO. So, for setting up the GPIO, I need to include a new header. I need to include linux slash gpio slash consumer.h. This is the header I need for GPIO. So, and down here I will declare a new global variable. Um, GPIO variable. So, the variable will be from the type struct gpio descriptor and it will be a pointer and I will name it my LED and I will set it to null initially here. Okay. So here I am in the dtprobe function. This function is called when loading the driver. And the first thing I will do is I will copy these four lines here and I will check if a uh, um, device property with the name green 
LED GPIO is present. And in case if not, I will print out this warning and I will um, return with minus one here. And of course I have to change this DT probe to DT GPIO. So let me do this here, DT probe, DT GPIO. Okay, now we should have replaced everything. Okay, and if this um, device property is present, I can now initialize my GPIO. So therefore I will use the function um, GPIOD get and I have to pass here my device pointer, the label from the GPIO which is green LED and I don't need to write the minus GPIO here and the last parameter is um, how I want to set up the GPIO and in my case I want to use GPIOD out low. So this will set up my GPIO for an output and will set it to low first. And this should return a valid pointer in case of success. If this function fails it will return a null pointer. And I can also use the function is error here to check if everything worked fine. If this returns something bigger than one, I know an error occurred. So let me copy these three lines here. Error could not set up the GPIO and I will return is error my LED here. Yeah, okay. So this should be the error code here. Good. So much for setting up the um, GPIO and I want to switch the GPIO over a ProcFS file. I already made a video about how to use ProcFS here. So I will just go and copy the code. This should make it a little bit easier for us here. So I need this header here. Then um, I need this variable here. Yeah, let's put it here. So I need a write callback because I only want to write this file. Yeah, let's do this here. Then I need the file operations. And I need the init code for it, which is here. And I will put the init code inside the DT probe function. And re the remove code I will put into the DT remove function here. Okay, though, so that should be it. So let's adjust it to our needs. So up here, creating proc fs file. I will call the file my LED. And I want to put it directly into the proc folder so I can set this to null. And here let's change this to my LED. Okay. And in case um, this wasn't successful, I will return minus error no memory. And I have to use GPIOD put to free my GPIO. And as an argument, I only have to pass the pointer to the GPIO descriptor here. Of course, I will do the same thing here in the remove function, which is called when I'm unloading the driver. Okay, and then we have to implement our write callback. Okay, so here. Okay. So what I will do here is I will use a switch case here. So user buffer zero case if I if I enter a one or a zero I will update the GPIO value and I can do this with the function GPIOD um, set the arguments here are the GPIO descriptor and the second one is the value which will be um, user buffer zero minus zero and default I would just do a break here 
and I will return count. So this should be our right callback. Pretty simple. Okay, so that should be it. Let me go through it quickly and check if it should be okay. Yeah, okay, so let's try to compile it. Um, set, okay, set is wrong. It should be set value, sorry for this. Set value is the correct function. Okay, let's try to build it again. Okay, now it looks good. Now let's first load our device tree overlay. DTBO, okay. And now we should be able to see um, device tree. So here we have our my device and we should have the property green. Yeah, we have the property green LED GPIO in our device. And now let's try to insert the module. Maybe let's make a clean first. DT GPIO KO. So let's look at the kernels log. Okay, so we entered the probe function, it, everything looks good. And now let's write a one to proc my LED. So the file is there too. And you could see the LED is now on. And when I write a zero to it, the LED will go off. And if I write anything else, nothing will happen. Okay, great. So now we have successfully um, write or we have successfully added a GPIO to our device and we have initialized it through a kernel module with a driver for our device. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.